What's going on, good people? Rich here, back for another episode of Best Episode Ever, presented to you by the Culture Garden Podcast. Not here, Dolo, of course, if you've been following along with us. We're discussing season four of Entourage. I got part of my Entourage, my good brothers, my brother Chaz in the building, along with my good dog, Spike Lou. What's going on, fellas? How y'all feeling? What's going on, my brother? Feeling good. Feeling great. How are you? Hey, man. Feeling good, man. Always a pleasure to be here with y'all to talk Entourage, man. It's been a lot of fun these past few weeks, and we are trucking along with the series. Uh, Before we get started, just a few promotional items I want to make sure everybody's aware of. Um, If you have been a fan of what you've been hearing, we this is not the only place where we do podcasts. Um, On Deck TV show. Hip Hop Center podcast. Spike Lou was a part of that. He's a host. They were gracious enough, him and Animal Brown, to have me as a guest this past episode. It dropped on Wednesday. Um, so yesterday, if you're listening to this on release date. Uh, but check that out. I'm going to make sure I put the link in the feed. Also, you already know, shout out to Ray P. We got we got y'all. Television podcast. Um, speaking of Spike Lou, he will be a guest on House of the Dragon discussing the finale. We're going to save our thoughts for that because I got a million things I could say, or actually, I really don't. Uh, (laughs) But we will definitely save our thoughts. Me and Chaz talked about it, the whole nine. Uh, We'll save that. Right after we wrap up House of the Dragon, we will be getting into Bel Air. So that is something that we will be discussing as well, season three. Um, Shout out to Good Ernest. I'm really enjoying Bel Air, excuse me. I'm glad you put me on there. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm (laughs) glad you're watching. Um, as far as Spike Lou and myself, we also work on a couple other things. I know this these some podcasting ass niggas. We get it. Good earners reviewing the Sopranos. We just released season five, episode 12, a classic flagship episode, long-term parking. If you're a fan of the Sopranos, you already know what that means. Continuing on, Spike Lou and myself also work on another week in the books. Shout out to our good brother Mo, our good earner brother. Um, they just completed 100 episodes, 100 chapters, should I say, and book one is now closed. Spike and myself will be opening up book two. That's going to be releasing next Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, then, bet. Next bet, Friday. Bet. Okay, bet, bet. And I guess this is a um, a world premiere because uh, I've only talked about it with the person that I'm doing it with, but if y'all know, it's football season, man. You see the Bengals stuff in the background. Spike got trash has Dallas Cowboys gear on. Uh, shout out to my boy D Hall, man. Uh, shout out D Hall's a diehard Cowboys fan, has been since elementary hey, school. Everybody shout ain't blessed enough, baby. They Everybody right, can't man. be blessed, yeah. man. Yeah. Shout y'all out to D Hall, man. Real guy. Y'all niggas, I already y'all niggas want, if y'all niggas want to be miserable, <laughs> feel free. Uh, but I bring him up not just for the Cowboys thing, but also, um, I remember I got I got him hip to Entourage, right? And he was texting me, he was like, Man, you gotta tell that story. It's not really a big story, but it was more so. I was pushing them like you got to watch Entourage, and I had all the DVDs. I still do, and I was renting them out like the library. Like, give him a season, he go watch it. He bring the one season back, I give him season two, and so on and so forth. I ain't have season eight on DVD, man, but he ran through those episodes in probably about three weeks, maybe a month mm. tops. So shout out to D Hall, man. I know he's out there listening, man. We definitely appreciate you. Um, but definitely I mentioned the Bengals. You. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mentioned the Bengals because um, next week. Dropping a Bengals podcast. Mm. Yeah, man. Shout out to my brother Phil, man. He uh we'll talk more about the origin, but he's been talking about doing a Bengals podcast, man. And I've been thinking about trying to get him into podcasting. Um, I've always said I, I feel like I'm more of a producer than a podcaster. Um, so I wanted to produce something for him to help him get that off the ground. Uh, however, he didn't have really have anybody to host with. We're both season ticket holders. We both go to games, we travel for games, diehard fans, been fans forever. So it just made sense to kind of do a weekly show going through the season. It's, you know, Bengal specific. We might talk about a few other NFL things, uh, but really just stick it. It's going to be for Bengal nerds. It's, you know, we, you know how we get down, man. We don't do stuff just for casual stuff, uh, casual effects, should I say. It's going to be for Bengal nerds. We're going to start after this first preseason game this weekend and really talk about everything Bengal. So, um, you know, when we go through the season, if we can find fans of other teams we're playing, we do plan on having them on the episode. So you already know Monday Night Football, Cincinnati at Dallas. After that game, we're going to make sure, probably before and after, make sure Spike Lou comes on so we can discuss how that game goes, man. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. When yeah. they play again? 
Uh, December 9th. December? We might have to, yep. like you said, pull up to that. Yeah, December 9th, man. December 9th. Definitely do that. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, tell a friend to tell a friend. Check out our link tree. All the information is in that bio. Um, and we are on YouTube as well. There will be spoilers and explicit content. But we are continuing, like I said, the best episode ever series with Entourage. It was created by Doug Ellen, starring Adrian Grenet as Vince, Kevin Connolly as E, Kevin Dillon as Johnny Drama, Jerry Ferrara as Turtle, and Jeremy Piven as Ari Gold. Obviously, executive produced by Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> and it's a light take on his life in Hollywood. Just to recap, seasons one and two, what ep- one, two, and three, excuse me, what episodes have gone to the finale already? For season one, Chaz spoke, excuse me, he picked Busey and the Beach. Season two, he picked Exodus. And season three, he picked Sorry Ari and, and The Princess and the Bride. Spike Lou for season one chose The Scene. He chose Exodus for season two. What about Bob and Return of the King for season three? And then I had an offer refused for season one. Or excuse me, The Scene for season one and offer refused for season two. Vegas, Baby, Vegas, and The Resurrection for Season 3. Those are the episodes moving on to the finale. Season 4 made its debut June 17th, 2007. Shout out to Moms, day after her birthday. Actually, fun fact, Mom's birthday, she was born June 16th, but on her legal documentation it says June 17th because they didn't get it to the hospital to the next day. So, um, yeah, you know, that's how they did it back in the day. But shout out to her, day after her birthday, this this season dropped. Uh, fellas, I'm going to start with you. Spike Lou, what are your overall mm-hmm. thoughts on season four? Season four wasn't as strong as the other seasons. And I think that was because that first episode, I would say, is maybe my least favorite of the whole series. Mm. I didn't like the office approach. Like, I feel like during that time frame, probably a lot of shows seen the success of the office and wanted to duplicate or try something like that. Entourage doesn't work that way. Entourage works better when we're like fishbowl in their life and getting to see into their world. That's what makes it so good. Um, and a little too much Billy Walsh. Like, mm-hmm. it, like they gave us just enough of him in the other season. This season, I think it was too much. And I found myself getting irritated by him by midway through the season. Overall, though, it's still Entourage. I still enjoy drama. I still enjoyed Ari and Lloyd's relationship and some of the little side ventures that they went on. Guest appearances up this season. Wasn't an awful season, but it definitely wasn't my favorite. Chaz, what about you? What's your thoughts on season four? It season four was the equivalent to me of season two of The Wire. It was oh, be careful, necessary, be careful. No, 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 blasphemy zone, Chaz. No, no, I'm not <laughs> talking no, about I'm the not. second best season. You talking about the second best Woo! season of The Wire? You talk about the second best season of the wire. We're talking about the I second agree best with season, that, brother. At all, no, and and, they, and these are three wire nuts. All three of us. Yeah, I can I can love the wire. With that at all. Mm-hmm. But, hey, but, hey, real quick, I real love chat, I love I, season two. Real quick, Chaz, because Spike and myself, we, we're definitely wires. Our favorite best series of all time. Uh, is it number one for you? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, what's it's number, number what's one. number two? I probably gotta go with Sam Crow. Um probably Sam mm, Sam Crow sucks. Sam Crow and uh and uh in Breaking Bad kind of go back I knew, and forth I, with me. I thought you was gonna say breaking bad. I know how you was yeah, a, you they, was on that shit faithfully. Yeah, yeah. Breaking both of them they kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I feel like Sam Crow. Sometimes I feel like Breaking Bad, but The Wire is the best series of all time. Okay, yeah, I and just I just finished a rewatch this week, and it, it still holds up. It still yeah. holds up. Yeah. So, so to my to my to my point though, <laughs> this is what I was gonna say. Season two for you. You were saying season two was the second best season. I, we'll, we'll yes, we'll agree to disagree on that. We'll and we'll definitely talk about that in the future. <laughs> okay. But, uh, <laughs> But I felt like it was a necessary evil. Uh, well, yeah, a necessary evil per se. It because it set up so much. This season not only set up, which was arguably the best season, 
in season five. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, season five is really, really, really enjoyable. But this set up everything that you're going to see going forward. And because of that, you needed this. However, to me, it was... If you're a fan of the show, you're gonna you're gonna watch it, you're gonna appreciate it, but it's not one of your t- it's not when you say the best seasons, it's usually three, five, six, and you may say seven, you might throw seven up there. Um, but those are typically when you say the best seasons. This this one kind of gets left left off, but it was a necessary evil. So that's that's kind of how I feel about this. I don't think anybody has seven on their list. <laughs> Interesting season. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about it once we get there. I've been yeah. watching it in a while. I said uh, some people. I... No, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember that in real time. Um, my thoughts overall, going back to Spike's point as far as Billy Walsh, I said it. I think in season one, how Billy Walsh is one of my favorite uh, B characters in the series, recurring characters. However, the magic of a recurring character is that they're recurring. When you get too much of them, it can become a little too much. It's almost like uh, the Bulls paying Zach Levine a max mm. contract. Like, bro, you 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 not a you not a champion. You are not the A guy. That's not you. You're you're best if, if you're on the team and you're the third best player. Then that team's probably really fucking good and got a chance to win the championship. If you're on the team Absolutely. and you're the best player, you're on the team and the best player. You're not really going anywhere. The Bradley Beal effect, all of that. Like you're not, you're not. There's only a few guys that are really supposed to carry it. Um, Dom had a line in season three, or Turtle had a line. One, I think that said, uh, four is a perfect number. Five is too much." Well, in the yeah. in the world of Entourage, five is a perfect number. Six is too much. Like we, Ari rounds it out, and that's all we really need. Um, as much as I enjoy Billy Walsh, and he does have some of my favorite moments in the season. Um, it definitely felt different with him there most of the time. I also will say I think season four did a good job of introducing what Entourage was going to look like look, look like past the first three seasons, right? Those throwaway episodes like the Day Fuckers that really don't have anything to do with anything, just the four guys hanging out. Yeah. A lot of that started this season. Remember, season one was the intro. Season two was like, all right, can we get Vince this movie? And season three was we got the movie. Now I'm the biggest movie star in the world. What happens after that? Right. They were all if you watch those seasons, you can watch them back to back to back and they all make sense. The story still connects. Season four starts that run of and I think season one did it a little bit. But season four really starts that run of all right, filler episodes and not filler as they're bad, but they really don't have anything to do with the plot. You know what I mean? And I think they do a good job of Mm -hmm. that um, starting here. But overall, it's not one of the best seasons. Um, You remember the Medellin thing, but it's not a strong season overall you can watch it it's, it's enjoyable um, but i'm still picking other seasons over so uh let's go ahead and talk about because i have some questions about the season overall let me get into that or you guys want to start with quotes let's let's start with questions all right let's go ahead and start with these questions all right cool 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 so i'm gonna save some of them for when i get to the episodes because uh, I have certain points, so some of these questions aren't here yet. But are y'all pressing down on Anna Ferris for that insurance information? If you find out she gave you the wrong number, are you pressing down? Are you going out of your way to look for Anna Ferris to say, hey, you got me fucked up? Yes. If you're E, not you, not us, not if we're us. I'm talking about we in Hollywood, we got the bread. It really ain't no thing but the principal. Are you pulling up on Anna Ferris? Hmm. This nigga found a star maps. <laughs> I, I'm telling y'all right now. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm a principal nigga. I'm a principal nigga. I would like to think that the people with me be like, hey man, my nigga, like, you know it ain't that deep. And I'd be like, you know what, you're right. But also part of me is like, if I ever run into her, you're gonna pay what you owe. I want to know what y'all Absolutely. really think about that. See, I'm I'm under the impression, and, and I'm answering from um he liked her. That nigga had a crush on her. He just didn't want to admit it. So he he, he he tried to act like he was pressed and using that star map because it was the insurance shit. But he really was trying to see what was up. He thought something was up there in a sneaky little E type of way. Before you go, Chaz, let me say this real quick. I'm glad you said that, Spike. 
everybody out there listening right now, please take heed to what I'm about to say. You need to walk with the confidence of Eric fucking Murphy. Because Absolutely. the fact that Eric, the fact that Eric really thought that he was about to bag on a fairness is insane to me. Like he kept telling Vince we had a moment. Like that was insane to me. And if think you about, if that's I, how long he'd been around Vince, though. He thinks he got some of that. He thinks some of that swag done rubbed off on him. Yeah, he man. Think, it, nigga, it, I'm it, obviously it did. Obviously it did. Because as and listen, when we talk about this, because me and me and Rich have talked about this several times. When it comes to over kicking your coverage, I mean, you got to look at it like Sloan. Then he had the perfect ten model. Then he had the uh, uh, Sloan little best friend that you know what I'm saying she was giving him oh. vibes. And the Ferris was, you know what I'm saying, on some kind of flirty shit with him. She was, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't to the level that he thought it was, but she kind of was feeling him for real. He, you know what I'm saying? He Matt, got a nice and, track and he, record. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, when it comes to overachieving, I mean, my man E is crazy with it. Y'all ever, uh, like, oh, my fault, Chaz, real quick before I even ask that question. What's your answer? You running down on her? You getting that insurance info? E, as E, yeah. Yeah, I ain't going. Bro. Me no. Yes, yeah, E. I'm. I'm definitely going. As as, as you ain't going. You ain't. Nah. She running to the back of you. You ain't going. You. Nah. Get the fuck out of here, Chaz. Nah, nah. Listen. When it, when it happened. When it happens that that time, if I see her after that, absolutely, I'm spazzing. But if it's if <laughs> yeah, it's you gonna, just, you're gonna get the cops called on. Them. Yeah, yeah, probably. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, yeah, yeah. When, when, when the anger hits the fan, it, it goes it all the way goes. You know what I'm saying? That's funny. It takes a lot to get me there, though. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Damn, I, I forget what I was. You, but it's hard I forget to forget like. what I was about to say. I can't even tell half the stories I want to tell on here. Uh, I forget what <laughs> I forget what I was going to ask you. Uh, so I'll save it. It'll probably come back later. Quick shout out to Sandy Koufax. They had an episode this season where they thought he was going to move on to glory. Sandy Koufax, that episode came out in 07. Sandy Koufax is still with us. He's 88 years old. Just want to shout out Sandy. Um, Let's go. Also, I told Chaz I was going to tell a story before we started recording. Um, it's one of the classic Chaz Rich stories. So um, this has to do. Well, let me ask you this before I even get into it. Um, I think it was the Wee Ho Ho, the episode where Turtle got pulled over by the cop for the weed yeah. and they brought oh. the chicks back. Does, any, does anybody have that in their top five? <laughs> I, I did. Which but I episode moved it was that? I think it's the Wee Ho Ho. The Wee Ho. That's, no, that's the one the where they, he it. was in the he was in the grocery store. They they had tried. Yeah, he to, was in uh, the grocery. Store. They yeah. ran out of the uh, Aurelius something uh, weed or whatever. It was that yeah, one. The, he he the had the three. Uh, he pulled the other mm-hmm. three chicks. Got pulled over by mm-hmm. the cops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does anybody have yeah. that in the top five? I'll save it if you have. Mm-hmm. All right, hold no. on. Is that the one? It, it is. It is an honorable mention, though. All right, bet. So, um, I just mentioned the moment. So, Turtle gets pulled over. He's got three women in his car. He's about to take them back to the crib so they can have the little midday fiesta. Turtle gets pulled over for running the stop sign. The cop smells the weed. Cop was on some super extra <laughs> dickhead shit. Made him get on the ground on his stomach. Extra. Then, if that ain't humiliating enough, he made him take the weed and told him to throw it in the throw it in the Throw it in the sewer, right? Turtle get back in the car, but he fooled him. He put the weed in the ledge. So when I was watching it, poor memory came back. I remember Chaz and myself, we had just left our brother T's crib, right? We in Toledo. We living in Toledo, Ohio at this time. And we had just left our brother T's crib. Uh, we had this job where they had this thing. You would work either Monday through Saturday. Like you would work Monday through Friday and work four hours on Saturday. And then the following week, you work Monday through Thursday and work four hours on Friday. So you either get in a long weekend or a short weekend. It rotates, right? So this is one of our short weekends. This is after work, man. We had just copped some bud. We go over mm. T's house. You know how it is. Friday after work, you what? You young, mm-hmm. everything yep. good in life, right? Got the world by the balls. This, world by the balls. Chaz had this red truck that with dirty tags. So we headed to the crib. Now, mind you, we're not even doing nothing crazy. Chaz just make a left turn. It's like a, one of those veer turns. You would think like a, a, a regular station car would pull up. The undercovers turn their lights on to get Chaz. And I'm thinking like the undercovers? Mm. For real? Like it ain't even that deep. So Chaz, <laughs> Chaz, 
this nigga Chaz pulls into a Dollar General, like quick as hell, turns the car off and gets out the car like he walk like he walking inside. <laughs> I don't pull that car one. Like, yeah, gets out the car like he walking inside. One. Undercover's like hell now, nah, y'all niggas staying put. They come through. I don't even know what it was. It was something about his uh, tags. So his tags were bad. They were grossly expired. <laughs> grossly. Like, grossly. That's what he said. I think that's what the cop said. The cop said your tags are grossly expired. My nigga, I had I to pull you over. Right? I've been there before, too. I told y'all we just had the bud. Now, flashback, man. I talk to Spike about this all the time, man. One of my superpowers or one of the things that I, I, I possess is I'm very observant. So I remember one day, this had to be a week prior, no lie, one week to two weeks prior to this, I was about to get in Chad's truck on the passenger side, and for some, it was a two seater, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was a two seater, yeah. so it didn't have it no back seat, but it had like this little small compartment behind us. The the uh, the pack it had a small compartment in the back, like just enough where you can put your hand in. And I'm lifting like the carpet pulled up a little bit. I'm like, damn, like just paid attention to it and shit. Didn't think nothing of it. The cops get us. I got the weed. I immediately remember that shit. I stuffed that shit in that compartment. Cops searching the car, can't find shit. We get out. I told the story about me in school where school looked out for me. That was my version of looking out for Chaz. Because them niggas did not find anything. Let us go with a warning ticket. Chaz probably got a ticket, but it is what it is. Uh, I would have been salty <laughs> if all our weed was going because we had just copped that right after work. Uh, but that always because the undercover's pulling us over. Chaz acting like he's going to the store the whole <laughs> nine. The shit was hilarious. Because uh, them niggas thought, I don't know what they was thinking. But yeah, That's I had to bring that one up, Chaz. That, that, that turtle right. shit reminded me of that. No, absolutely. And Rich will always be clutch for that. Like, like that's one of Rich's most clutch moments. Because them motherfuckers <laughs> really search. They like they, they they really search. Oh just because yeah. I had once they time. search it, they can't believe they don't they can't find nothing. Either. Right. They they like, was I, I, all over I know one time a nigga told me uh one of the cases, like I smell it, I know it's in here somewhere. I just don't I can't find it. I'm like, I can't help you, bro. Mm -hmm. That's on that's you. Like, like, I don't know what you want me to say. Hey. Hey, that's gonna be the most moment. I had two of them in my yeah. life. Shout out to shout out to school, shout out to Chaz, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm not gonna lie to you though. Just I'm not that episode's not in my top five, but that that girl that Turtle was being mean to that, that they was going back and forth, I'd have knocked her down. I don't know what Turtle yeah, was tripping on. I'd have knocked her Facts. down. Like Facts. I might have knocked her down before maybe Vince's girl, I would have did first, but definitely before E's girl. I'd have knocked Turtle, yeah. I would have say she would have been first, probably. Yeah, 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 it was, man. And that look—it wasn't one for E. It was one for drama. One for drama, yeah. yeah. And that look on E's face. And let me ask you This is the question I was going to ask here. I'm glad it came back to me. That look on E's face in that restaurant when she answered that phone, her boyfriend's on the end. She, she E heard that, "Hey, baby." <laughs> that shit man. was pricey. So it made me want to ask: Have y'all ever been on a date <laughs> that you thought was a date, but it really wasn't? I've been on a date where she thought it was a date and it really wasn't. I was about to say, I was, I was, I was, I've been on both. I've been on both. I'd have been on where, one. You know? Where I thought it was and it wasn't. But she still let me hit, though. So it kind of worked itself out in a strange way. I, I, man, I guess one for the good guys. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying? It kind of worked itself slippers, out. Slippers count. Slippers yeah, count. You eat. You eat. For, you eat. <laughs> You eat for real. You a lucky ass nigga. Um, <laughs> definitely, I, I had that happen to me once, where I thought it was some, um, but it's happened. Unfortunately, happened to some women a lot more than uh, I would like to admit to. Um, I, ain't I would say I'm it's proud. been a. I'd say it's been an exchange of contact where you know I thought it was one thing, but it was something like business. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought I've been mm. that before. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. hit them up with the text or something, they like, well, wasn't, wasn't no expecting doubt. that. No doubt. So, yeah. No doubt, man. Yeah. I got I got more questions for y'all, but we'll get to them when I get into these episodes um, in my top five and things like that. I got some specific things I want to ask. Uh, however, before we get there, let's talk about favorite celebrity appearance. I'm going to go through the list, episodes one through 12. Episode one, we have writer Stephen Gagan, known for writing Traffic, Siriana. Episode two, Anthony Michael Hall, who is a, uh, I say, C-list kind of actor. You've seen him, probably seen him in a lot of stuff, don't know who he is. He was a dude pissing off the balcony uh, at Vince's <laughs> Hotel. Episode three. Yeah, yeah. Episode three, 
Uh, you have some small stars. You'd recognize them if you knew the movies they were in. Uh, but there's one big star that they were all hanging out together with. Uh, you had Mickey Jones, Max Gale, Chuck Zito. And, of course, you have Dennis Hopper. They were all at his house. And it made sense for them to be the ones hanging out with Dennis Hopper, almost like an older version of Entourage, uh, except for everybody was actors. Episode four, Spike, I need you to um, – I didn't tell Chaz this. Um, but I want you to get into it briefly. Episode mm-hmm. four, guest appearance, M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, my God. I remember texting Chaz. Me and Chaz were talking about, uh, I asked him if he saw the trailer for Trap. He didn't. I sent it to him. He immediately said, oh, I'm seeing this off the trailer alone on some Medellin <laughs> shit. Okay. Um, I was hype as well. Chaz, I didn't tell you this. Spike went and he said that shit, he, he felt disrespected. Chad, it's, the most, it. it's one of the most disrespectful movies I've ever seen in my life. Hands down. Like the only thing that kept me from walking out of it is because I felt like he couldn't have been being this disrespectful. <laughs> I'm talking about some Tubi type shit, bro. Where you looking at a movie and you see something happening, you're like, hey, just do that. They, there's, no, there's no way they wanted me to suspend belief that much. And this just happened. Like this, this movie was like, I'm gonna write the characters into a corner and fuck getting them out of the corner. I'm just going to write them into the corner. We're just going to go to the next scene. Like it was so <laughs> disrespectful. It was so disrespectful. Like you had something happen one scene, bro. Something will happen one scene. And then the next scene, there's no logical way that the next thing you see on your screen should be happening. And they just go with it. You're like, damn, wasn't bro just fuck it. We just push it on to the net. It was so disrespectful. It it was one of the most disrespectful movies I've ever seen in my life. Like you you gonna want to hit him? You gonna want to hit him up? You be like, bro, what was you like? What was this? Like a money grab or something? You like you laundering money yeah, you or something, you. bro? Oh shit! I mean, he might be though, man. Real talk, he might be. In it's like you money laundering grab. money or something, bro. Yeah. Hey, bro. I'm I'm beginning to think now, Rich, that I thought more about it since that's his daughter. This maybe was just like a music video for her. And in order to get the studios to fund it, I'm gonna put a movie around it. It just don't make really too much sense, and I ain't gonna put much thought into it. It's gonna, it's just gonna be a movie. It ain't got no real plot or ending or anything like that. It's just gonna be a movie. Yeah, but bro. When y'all see this, y'all are gonna see exactly what I'm talking about because y'all watch a lot of film too. It's disrespectful. It's just disrespectful. You know how you'll watch some movies and they'll do shit. You be like, damn, that was smart because like they know like you got to do this to do that. Like shit don't just happen. Man, in this movie, shit just happened and they don't even address it. I'm doing this weird, like motherfuckers doing weird shit in front of a crowd of people. No one says nothing. Like it's it's the most unrealistic movie, damn near, I've ever seen. Damn. Animal Brown said the same thing. Honestly, the way Spike talks about it makes me want to see it even more. I gotta see it with my own eyes. I gotta I'm see it. You. That. It's almost fascinating. It's almost fascinating that he got this off and through producers and a studio house and like any of that. It's it's fascinating that he got that much clout. That shit is insane. <laughs> it's insane. That shit wild, man. Yeah. I, uh, shout out to Mike hey, Shamalan. I, I got to see it now. Like, I have to see it with my old eyes. Me like, too. I said the same thing, man. I got to see it. I swear to God, at least once when you see it, you're going to be like, what? What? What happened? What just happened right there? <laughs> Like you gonna ask yourself that? It's crazy. That's like Otto Hightower randomly being locked up in the season finale of House of the Same Dragon. Like, what the fuck vein. Did that happen? Same vein. When the <laughs> fuck? What? How? Why we didn't know nothing about this? Why did we miss all of this? Like this is that's an yeah, important yes. plot point. You you should have plugged <laughs> in. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to M Night Shyamalan. Uh, episode five. We have the reporter Elvis Mitchell. He really is a reporter. Um, Brian Grazer, producer. Beautiful mind. He won an Oscar for that. That's who Ari saw in the middle of the street. And then, of course, as On Deck uh, discussed maybe two, three weeks ago, the most popular rapper to ever grace Earth, Snoop, episode five. Okay. Episode six and seven, we have no appearances. Episode eight, we get a return of Gary Busey. We have Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings fan, um, fame. And then, of course, Mary J. Blige, Crispy Chicken, Crispy Chicken. Episode nine, we have a return. <laughs> we have um, Anna Ferris and in episode 10. Yeah, hey man, y'all remember that fucking Burger King commercial? Yes, um, <laughs> episode nine and 10, we have Anna Ferris. Episode 11, 
Shout out to Melissa Ford, first and foremost. Yeah. Hey, I thought that was her. I called E. I called, I was I called E. <laughs> You caught E, you caught E looking, I mean, right? I called M4, yeah, I called M4. Man, I was like, is that Melissa? I had to run it back. Yeah, definitely Melissa Ford. She was one of the stewardess. Um, Anna Ferris obviously made her last appearance. Sidney Pollock, the legend, um, the late Sidney Pollock, he was in that episode. And also, I don't know, maybe the most famous, or maybe not the most famous, but right there. Um, this is This episode premiered maybe a month before graduation dropped we get a 2007 kanye in there which is one of the best in my opinion one of the best entourage cameos um oh, yeah. and maybe because i just that kanye is just so far gone uh that when i watch it it just kind of makes me smile and remember better times uh but i'd never yeah. forget him popping up on that screen with that big ass plane and like i said that's when that's when kanye was through the roof Facts. Graduation hadn't even dropped yet, so shout out to Kanye. And then the final episode, we did not have any guest appearances, only people on the red carpet who are already at con. Uh, so as far as films this season, Vince had Medellin, discussions of Lost in the Clouds, and then that turned into a movie called Silo because Billy Walsh fucked it up. Let's talk about some best quotes before we get into these uh honorable mentions and top five. So Chaz, I believe this is your week to start. We back at the top of rotation. What are some of your best quotes from season four? Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, when they talking to the uh, when they talking to the now this is this is strictly quotes. So don't don't. He said, "Don't blame me." Yeah, yeah. When they uh, when. The bodyguard, I mean, not the bodyguard, but the security uh, guard comes in. He's talking to um, to Vincent and, and Drama. About, sorry, Harvey. Uh, this is Sorry Harvey yeah, episode with the mayor. Yes, yes. He's like, he's like, uh, you know your boy you came in with? He's like, yeah, what about him? <laughs> he's like, he's about to see the face with a tranny. <laughs> what? Come on. And Drama's like, that's no tranny. That's Annika. Annika's got a bigger stick than you, Drama. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, they, I, they could not get away with that in 2024. Not bro. at all. Man, you I can't, thought, man. Oh, not at God. all. Oh, man. man. Jesus. And the end scene, bro. Like, come oh, on. Man, yeah. bro. Oh, oh they, man. So, yeah, um, this is when um, the guys come back. Um, Billy is talking i believe it's season two i mean not season two episode two i mean uh the first cut um eric and billy are talking and uh he sees this little sexy ass latina woman walk by and he's like what's she do and billy is like she gets blown so out <laughs> she gets blown out she's a street walker from i thought uh, i brought back from columbia hey shout out to how the fuck did you get her back from columbia Hey, how he would, uh, but I believe it. But I believe it. <laughs> but I believe mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? So Billy Walsh uh, probably pull her in some luggage. Yeah, like, snuck so, her in some hey, luggage or something. So he did something. Um, Ari, when he's uh he's talking to the school about um about his son, <laughs> he was like, uh, <laughs> the little boy took his uh, son's story. He was like, I teach my son never to let people take things from him. That's my Israeli, uh, Israeli blood. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not okay, nigga. <laughs> no, Ari was wild. Ari had a, 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 a cluster of quotes this season. Man. Yeah, so I'm going to let y'all fill in the more, you know what I'm saying, most, because I don't, I know we probably have, uh, yeah. we're going to repeat. So I'm going to let y'all get some off too. All right, bet. Spike Lou, what you got? All right, I got a couple. Uh, one when they were partying, planning the events, welcome back party. You're ruining this party, drama, says Turtle. By stopping 200 people from shitting on my toilet, I don't think that's ruining anything. <laughs> Turtle, who shits at a party? Well, even just piss. What do drunk people do? They piss and they miss. That's an imported Italian limestone in there. It's pornous, and I don't want anything getting pissed on. Uh, drama, God has already rewarded me for my good deeds. Turtle, what do you do? Unreceive your hairline? Uh, <laughs> drama, when they were going to meet the chicks... Rumor has it your girl gave the best rim job in L.A. Trust me, play your cards right, and by four, you'll be sitting on her face like a bidet. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Ari uh, in response. <laughs> Ari in response to Lloyd. No, it's uh, not good news. Good news is when the wife agrees to eat the box for your birthday. This is great news. Uh, Ari, I parted the Red Sea for you. Eat. Don't piss on the sand. Uh, drama to show my appreciation for your predictability. E, I'm going to take some of my winnings and buy you a nice gift certificate to a farm that'll help you grow some balls. Ari to the <laughs> twins when he fired them. How can one embryo produce two fucking losers? Jeff says, Ari, what's the problem? Ari says, the problem is you're a disgusting mutant. <laughs> now go reconjoin with your brother in the unemployment line. <laughs> and then, um, Eric. Anna asked me to go out to dinner with her. Drama, she asked you, Eric, yeah, make sure you end this cycle of bitchdom. <laughs> and the last one I have, Drama, you know I used to fear traveling with you, baby, bro. I thought if we crashed, the press would say Vincent Chase and Brother Parish. Now with the hit TV show, I'm quite certain they'll say Chase Brothers Parish. So that hey, was those, are awesome. those are awesome good ones. Bear with me. I have a lot of good quotes this season. All right, got about a, about a good eight or nine of them. So we're going to get right okay. started. Billy Wall starts it off episode one. Show me the girl who wants to be friends, and I'll show you the guy who's fucking her. One of the realest right. ass quotes ever. Right. <laughs> uh, once again, Billy Walsh. Why fuck a woman with a vibrator when you got a dick, huh, suit? Um, <laughs> drama. Don't be mad, E. It's not our fault you were born without the sport fucking gene. Um, shout out to all the sport fuckers all there, out there. Turtle and drama. Well, excuse me. Turtle, I give my nuts to be that guy for one day. Drama. Well, if you had no nuts, then what would be the use? Fair question. <laughs> uh <laughs> Eric, this is probably this is the most fucked up and one of my most favorite quotes of the season. Extremely fucked up. Eric, I'm not searching out a girl just to fuck her. Drama. Why not? Eric, because it's me. <laughs> drama. No, 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 no. Mean is when I made Jess Mancini ride a bike home after I ass fucked her. <laughs> I had that one too. <laughs> oh, one of the most Ooh. wildest quotes, but that shit cracked me up every time like I ain't never seen it. Um, drama, if I'm dropping five G's, I'm at least getting some pussy. Fill them on that. Mm -hmm. um, Ari, That's another true. real quote. Baby, we agreed to suffer through monogamy together. <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> Drama. They love Viking Quest in France. <laughs> Billy Walsh. What the hell is Viking? What the fuck is Viking Quest? <laughs> <laughs> and then my last one for the season. I don't even remember. Uh, I don't even remember Anna Ferris's dude's name. But he when he pulled up on him at the bottom of the hill, you got a thing for my girl. He says, "No, Dave. We oh, it's Dave. So Dave, you got a thing for my girl. No, Dave. We work together. What are you talking about, Dave? Okay, you got a girlfriend. E no." Dave, you gay? He, no. <laughs> Dave, then how you gonna look at me in my face right now and tell me you ain't got a thing for my girl? <laughs> oh, that was good. man. That was yeah, good shout stuff. out to the quotes, man. So, in general, I understand where you're coming from, but me, and affairs never did it for me. Like, nah, I, I wouldn't, mean, like, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't give her a second look if she was on the it's if like, she was on the streets. As, like nothing. Listen, I, it, it's knowing that she's she in a fair that you will. She cuter in here than I've ever seen her in anything else. I say that, but I do it's agree with you, Chaz. I do it's, agree. It's with a preference. You. Yeah, I, I agree as well. It's a preference <laughs> thing because the first thing I thought about. All due respect, I feel I always feel bad when I bring this up, but it's also once again hilarious. Um, I think about the classic Dark Knight tweet. Um, when, I, I don't know if y'all know or familiar with this. Somebody tweeted out like Joker talking about some. Uh, he gonna set the he gonna, he gonna do something that, or Maggie he gonna do all this for Maggie Gyllenhaal. He's like nigga, set the block on fire. Don't give a fuck about <laughs> Maggie Gyllenhaal. I had to send y'all the tweet. The shit classic, um, but it's a preference thing, man. As you know, somebody finds them beautiful. They are beautiful people. I'm sure. Um, I'm just not physically attracted to them. I tell you hey, what, you though. Know speaking what? of it. In the same vein, Ari wife this season though, I had never looked at her like this is the season they stepped her up. Yeah, like they had her in a little Brian panty set and like she was she was uh, she was all right this season. Mm hmm. I, fucking with I fucking mean, with Julio. Mm hmm. Yeah, I I mean a little too thin for my for my liking, but 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. She did. I'm look still better. going. I'm oh, still yeah. going. Yeah. You know, yeah. she that shapely thin. You that shapely thin, though. Mm-hmm. Like there's a little something there. It's a little, it's enough there. <laughs> Beverly Hills thin. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> she been doing hey, Pilates and, and whatever the fuck the other shit is. Yeah. 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 There's a lot. And they're probably vegan and shit like that, you know. Mm-hmm. No doubt. No doubt. But all right. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Chaz, we're going to start with you. Just go through your honorable mentions. And then go ahead and start with your number five episode, and then we'll go to Spike, and we'll go to myself. So what are your honorable mentions, and what are you going to kick off your five with? Okay, we got the WeHo. Um, WeHo uh, is honorable mentions. The Young and Stoned, and the first cut is the deepest. Those mm. are my honorable mentions. My number five... Is going to be Welcome to the Jungle. Mm. Um, it's it kind of sets the tone, like you really start to see, like the the fact that this motherfucker Billy is nuts, and mm-hmm. they, you know, what I'm saying, and the fact is, like when I when I started to see this shit, I, I said when and watching it for I don't know, maybe the fourth or fifth time. I realized that immediately they should have never agreed to the whole. Well, I always thought it was <laughs> ridiculous anyway for them to even do the first cut thing, or I mean the, the final cut for they agree to that. But that's that's um, that's the equivalent. That's the equivalent of the Browns paying Deshaun Watson a guaranteed contract. <laughs> like you don't do that shit. You, you leave yourself no outs. The dumbest shit ever. Well. I'm not gonna say. Listen, they they were going off off his production in the past. I understood, but that his agent his agent deserved. You know what I'm saying? That's that that motherfucker deserves like a, a motherfucker every kind of watch you can possibly buy him for Christmas because that that shit right there was classic. But in this, yes, that's exactly what this is. Um, you you get on that, and then you see you see this motherfucker really, like you really realize how much this motherfucker is off. Falls in love or or in lust with, you know, what I'm saying one of the act, little little actresses that you know, what I'm saying it's an up and coming actress and shit like that. She ain't really trying to play him no motherfucking mind and shit like that. Then you know, what I'm saying then she end up you know fucking giving uh, drama a hand job. Fucks his, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, he, he's he's going around checking everybody over this young Philly. And it's like, and <laughs> shout out to her because nigga, I understand. Sophia uh Vergara is she, mm-hmm. she was gorgeous then, she's gorgeous now. Like, you know what I'm saying? So uh I understand right. that, but I understand I understand him being perturbed, but I don't understand like going through that because you can have anybody you're a fucking director um you you see um you you see the the potential collapse and then that at the end of the episode the um the director uh not the uh the narrator asked him a question about if this is gonna be a good movie or not and um i got the quote here yeah, and he says it, it's either gonna be genius or it's gonna fucking suck. Till I see the first cut, I have no idea. But you, you know what? Neither does every anybody else. You see, you see, motherfucking E in the background on that shit, and and, and that mm-hmm. lets you know right there to there. Like if I'm E, I'm A. E. The fact that he even said this shit, I'm telling that the first thing I'm doing when we get off the plane, I'm calling an Ari and I say, hey, listen, I ain't even got to see this shit. The fact mm-hmm. that this motherfucker think that it is a possibility of this shit sucking, we need to place this motherfucker immediately. Hold on, though. Let me push back a little bit on that. They saw those dailies, and they came out of that bitch saying, remember Vince said, to my, did I tell you or did I tell you? And Vince said, you absolutely right. Even Johnny said, if I don't get a little piece of something in this movie, man, I'm going to kill myself. Like, the I think dailies. he knew. Yeah. yeah, yeah I don't know if that was enough for him to say, fuck this. That's a Billy Walsh thing to say. Billy Watches always go for the, yeah, the same way he the same I way he was yelling. Rich. I don't I, I don't make movies. I make films. Like he's just an he, extra you, nigga. But see, you, I think, you I think they, coming. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I felt like 
coming out of those dailies, they had the right movie. But Billy Walsh being the reckless motherfucker that he is, felt like people liked it too much. So I want to do the, I want to throw the extra sauce on top of it, and that's what made it bad. I think that's what maybe, happened with the movie. What we were supposed to take it? Maybe that's right. Is the 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 traffic circle when you can have a four way stop? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Many, you know what I'm saying? Say too many smart people in the room. Like, exactly. yeah, a four way stop would be perfect, but but you you still <laughs> go into this and you you build a traffic circle. Now you made everything complicated. Mm-hmm. That 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 could possibly be been it, but. Going further in a in another episode, he he says, "Now nah, I feel like he peaked, so he didn't really have no faith in that motherfucker at all." Facts. You know, and, he, and and I was gonna say we got to talk about it a little bit, man. We give E a hard time, man. He was right. No, he definitely he was right. Was about, right. He, was, he was right about Billy Peaking. He was right about Medellin. He was right about a lot this season. I hate to yeah, say, yeah, that. but he was he was wrong about some other shit too. So you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you and you know you right. Come my bad. Good decision. No, go ahead. No, because I, I, I mean, was gonna like, say, he, you right, Rich. Right. He was right, but he was being such a bitch about being right though. Like I like he was being like so much of a bitch about being right. So it kind of even make it null and void that he was right because you being like I'm your homie. I'm Vince, and like he was just being a he was just being a bitch about it, man. That's a fact. That's a straight fact. Was he being now? Was he being a bitch because because as that's his personality, or because of the uh, or because of the fact that Billy chose to antagonize him at every every turn? He felt unappreciated. Nope. Both of those, and this is the first time he had real skin in the game, so he was nervous. I put my money up as nigga. as he should have. As he, As he should, should be, been. but you could tell it played out like you could see it playing out though. Like he ain't never acted like a bitch like this until his money was in the game. Now my money in the game is like, oh shit! Like I'm questioning Vince. I'm going behind his back. I'm doing all this sneaky shit. Like it, 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 it. Well, for me, it was a rough season for E. It, it goes. It, it goes like I told you. It, it's like I told you, Chaz, when we were on the phone earlier. The issue with E and the reason I can't even have any kind of sympathy or empathy for him is because. If that's how you really feel, you got to stand on your own too, and you got to say that. You got to really stand on that. Like you can't be, oh, I'm just supporting my direct. I'm supporting my nah, nigga. This shit suck. Like I really got to get this shit rolling. If that's how you feel, like you can't be doing all the oh no, I'm supporting them. You getting a, now you getting a hold of the new projects that you're supposed to do with this dude that you don't like all because you won't be honest about what's going on. Like if that's your man <laughs> and you think this is bad, and he tried to tell him, but you got to put your foot like that's when you got to really shake Vince. That's when the best friend shit got to kick in. Like, yo, my nigga, like, I'm, you know me. You know me since we were six years old. You know I wouldn't be hating. No, none of this shit. I'm telling you right now. Like, if you go through with this, the shit is going to ruin your career. You knew it, so you got to say it. You standing by just letting that shit pass, I can't roll with it. But, Spike, what are your honorable mentions, and what's your number five episode? Honorable mentions for this is number two. Episode four, excuse me, episode three, season four, Mel Booty. Um, one of the unsung heroes is when Vince accountant calls that they gave they give us just enough of him throughout the series for him to still be effective and funny. And mm-hmm. Vince calling and asked him to borrow 100k for the bet, and he was yelling, Get out of there, Vince, get out of there. That was hilarious to me. <laughs> right. Um, another honorable mention is the day fuckers. This whole thing was fucking ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> the the furry suit and another honorable mention was the we ho ho. I think, like you said as well, Chaz. And then my number five episode is going to be Lost in Clouds. Lost in Clouds. Okay then. Okay then. That, Lost in the, Clouds. The, hold on. Which one? Um, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Episode nine. Oh, excuse me. Young, the young and, stone? and Stone. Yeah, Young okay, and Stone. I don't you. know what I got. Yeah, the Young okay. and Stone. Yeah, that's the car accident yeah, episode. Episode nine. Accident, yeah, when he ran into Anna Ferris, and uh, I like the whole E having another client. How Vince feels about that? Yeah, the whole episode nine playing out that was good for me. Yeah, no, I, um, that's a good choice. Um, and to your point too about that Malibu episode. That's one of my favorite moments of the entire season. Because shout out to mm-hmm. uh, the actor. I can't even think of his name. Uh, but Beansy, obviously in Sopranos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But the way that he was on the phone, first of all, he getting his blood pressure checked. 
And he was like, <laughs> when you say I'm broke, E, because E asked him like a little kid, like, when you say I'm broke, what do you mean? Like, you busted. You broke. You living <laughs> off the American Express. <laughs> and that nigga Vince's response, like, hmm. He said, hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> hmm. Like, the fuck is you talking about? He said, I can't leave, man. I made a bet. He said, yes, the fuck you can. You put, oh, one, you put one foot shit, in front man. of the other and you move. And you walk out of the door. <laughs> yeah, oh, this shit was good. It. Shout out to them. As far as my honorable mentions go, I have the Weeho Ho, Young and the Stoned, Malibu is a uh, honorable mention, and um, no cons do. No cons do, man. I think it had the best celebrity appearances of the epi- of the season. As a whole, the episode didn't necessarily it, it, it was enjoyable. It's hard to leave it off the list. Um, but at the five that I did, uh, I have good reasoning for them, and we'll get into it. So my number five is going to be the day fuckers. Um, because once again, I mentioned at the top of this where Entourage started rolling in these episodes that really have nothing to do about nothing, right? Um, and if it wasn't for one particular part about this episode, no cons do would have been in my top five, but we have to talk about this, fellas. We have to talk about this. Um, obviously, this is the episode where there's the bet between who can get laid first between Ian Turtle. Ari's trying to get his son in school. Um, all the public, all the private schools are turning away. So Ari's trying to do some, um, um, do some damage control to see if he can get his son in school. All of that's going on, but the main thing, the most important thing, first time all season that we've run into Sloan. So Sloan this, this was back. so disrespectful. I got to ask y'all a question because oh. every time I watch this, I get upset. Every time I watch this, I get upset, right? So Sloan and E don't plan on seeing each other. Sloan is meeting with uh, you know Vince at this point. He already got his girl. They up in her room. He sh- she's showing him the sheets that they, they're selling and advertising. Vince is left with her top sales. Or excuse me, E is left with her top sales assistant. E is going somewhere. He runs in the Sloan, and you can see the shock. Like E, first of all, <laughs> first of all, E never called her, which I want to know. I know she said don't call, but are y'all calling? Absolutely, hundred percent. Right. What What's the context well, of him well, never calling? Like you know, he, you know did what? he leave? He just said, all right, so hold on. Let's get into yeah. this. Is this hold what, on, this is a major this. thing for me this season. I want to know, did he leave from Medellin and never call Sloan no, again? No, E, E. No. I mean, no. I, excuse me, Spikes. My, no disrespect <laughs> by calling you E. I got to talk about this shit. We got to, I, I, this is, yeah, we got is mind blowing. This is yes. my blowing. All right, so here's what E did, right? E, at the end of season three, moves in with Sloan, right? Mm-hmm. Moves his boxes. We see this happen. He got yes. his Marbury jersey, the whole nine. He goes to Colombia for six months to shoot Medellin. Mm-hmm. Months, half a year, y'all. For y'all keep a square home. After Medellin wraps, instead of going home to my girl who held me down for six months and got my stuff like it's a storage hall, he, he go goes to Italy. Spike, not for a week. Not for three, three weeks. That nigga was gone for three months. So he was going for nine months with Sloan. And then pulled back up when they ran out of money, and then it called Sloan when he got there. I'm assuming they might have had a conversation for him to get his things from her place. And it don't sound like it's even that because Sloan was genuinely shocked when she saw him. She didn't even like, know he was back. Shocked. Like I had no idea you were back. And yeah, because she would have known you know, all your stuff missing, you must be back. Like that means his shit is still over there. Is that not some of the wildest? Who does he think he is? That's crazy. We, we had this conversation earlier, and, and let me. Just this say, is <laughs> no. Go ahead, Chad. Let me just say this: motherfucker is there, there's a different level of what the fuck when it comes to eating. There's a totally different level. Like, bro, I can understand. I I can't understand going to Italy after you've been in Colombia, especially if you're not partaking in, in the <laughs> Colombian women. If you're not partaking in them, but even if you are, why won't you? And you know he did. I'm not, I'm not, right. I don't understand the. I do not understand the whole point of being over there for six months. I would have went over there maybe for a week or two, came back. You know what I'm saying? Then if I need to go back, I come back, and you know what I'm saying. Like, but I'm I'm making multiple flights. I'm not. 
I'm not going to stay over there for six months away from my chick in, in, in the land of beautiful women. I'm not about to do that. I'm not even about to put myself in that kind of scenario. I don't understand what the fuck he was on. I don't understand why he felt like he needed to be there. You're a producer. A producer. Yes. Like this motherfucker, like like his his codependency with Vince is it was uh it was on some outlandish shit and cost him his relationship. Well, that and just being stupid cost him his relationship. Facts. Because who the fuck who the fuck decides to move in with a chick and then turns around after you move and you in with for the nine chick, months? Worst type of nigga. Nine months. The, the audacity. Fuck? Man, and look, this ain't some poo putt. This is fucking Sloan. Like, and, not to mention, she, she drop dead gorgeous. She's rich. Like, I don't even rich need you. Nigga. Like, like, what are we talking about? The audacity of a character like E is baffling to me. I think it was Man, a serious listen. disservice too to us as Entourage fans to that for that to play off off screen. Now I know we get payoffs later in the series, but as I was watching this, I had forgot, and I was like. They just got like got rid of Sloan without even letting us know anything other than this random bump in. And you mm-hmm. can almost forget about it because they don't even mention her in the first what two episodes? Right. Yeah, it, goes, it goes beyond that. Like it's it's even yeah. more. This episode didn't happen until episode seven. We didn't it's see Sloan to episode crazy. seven. We literally didn't even we didn't even hear her name outside of maybe episode two. I wonder. I thought I was gonna get a richism from here, and you had some backstory as to maybe it was a contract mm-hmm. dispute or the actor nope. was doing something else. But I nope. couldn't fucking believe this. This this really bothered me, man. As I was watching this, I was like, "Did they? Did they?" Hey, do bro, it? it bothered it bothered all three of us. All yeah, three. It's Sloan a cold piece, way. man. Yep. And yeah. listen, Chad, Chaz, you had mentioned too. Sloan got her own bread. You had brought up the fact that why don't you call Sloan and say, "Meet me in Italy." Pull up. Bro, like, you you chose to be in Italy, one of the most one of the most romantic places in the fucking world. You chose to be without your lady to kick it with your homies and not get pussy. It, it's beyond and me. It's a different. It's, it's a it's different of, kind of what the fuck when it comes bro, and it's, to fucking E. <laughs> and it's one of two things: like either you're sitting on the phone with her because you fuck with her in Italy, wasting your time cupcaking, or you fucking other bitches. Either one, like she ain't gonna be cool with like she ain't gonna want to talk to you all day and night while you're sitting in Italy and you like doing whatever the fuck you're doing in Italy, or you ain't talking to her and she thinking, Oh, this nigga out here fucking bitches. But I guess well, she, lose, tells lose. This, she tells him, if you go to Italy, we're done. <laughs> Why the fuck that's, did you choose? I I, I can't, I can't. That's I can't I, can't I, real it. quick, and we'll we'll keep moving on, but that is a great point. The fact that Sloan. We talked about she cold, she got bread, but she also grew up in L.A. and Hollywood. And people call it Hollywood for a reason. For her to still be this great human being, as far as we can tell, like you she don't let women a lot like of grace. You, you, yeah, a lot of grace because she said she gave him the heads up. And I don't know what E is going on in E's head when he hears her say, if you go to Italy for three months after being gone for six, I'm cool on the six. I'm not even tripping about the six. I accepted that. But if you leave for another three, I'm out. And for either be like, you know what? Cool. Bet. <laughs> That's wild to me. That's hard for me to really wrap my brain around. Hey, All man. right. The, hey, the, the question is, how the fuck did all, all, what, all three of them, Vince, Drama, and Turtle, all tell him, hey, bro, you, nobody told him, hey, bro, you can't do better than her. They probably like, that's why I wish I wish that had played out on screen because I know drama shit to cuddle with him. I know I mean, drama I, is like, oh, she will be gone when you get back, my nigga. <laughs> like, hey, what the fuck? Why are you like, like nobody says, man. why the fuck are you here? <laughs> hey, well, what you what you always say? Man, man got a weird, weird case. Yeah. Why is he? <laughs> well, why are you around? Yeah, like, why is he around? Bro? Why, is that, right? why this nigga around, <laughs> bro? Yeah, he had to, a to weird case. You. man. <laughs> Definitely before you case. before you get into your number four, Chaz. I just want to bring up two qu- other things about this episode. One, I don't even know how the fuck you find out that you were furry. Like I don't even know what kind of. That's I'm not here. To, I'm that. I'm not here to kink shame. I'm not here to kink shame. Do what you do. Whatever gives you pleasure. I don't. I just don't know how you follow the steps to even find out that that's something you into. That's just. It's got to be. 
That's got to be man. insufferably hot, man. Mike, I ain't no little know. bitty nigga, man. Like I know you, they be I know that I know that suit stunk, like from just it, sweating in that motherfucker. Yeah. Just, it just like smell like a gym in there, nigga. Hey. That shit, wow. <laughs> and you listen, like I said, whatever, man. I don't even know how that happens, but more power to you. Also, if y'all remember, he ran into Sloan. They having that little moment. I'll tell you one thing that would have pissed me off to the moon. Old girl, who I don't even know your name. Why the fuck are you stepping up and pulling up next to me? Like we somebody, like we together, and you see me having this conversation yeah, with this. I'm woman. talking what to somebody f- clearly right here, right? Like, what, what? What are you trying to do? Like, I know that's like a woman thing. I won't even say a woman thing. That's a person thing. Whoever wants to be seen, I want you to know that I'm here. I want my presence to be felt. But I just met you 30 minutes ago. Facts. Like, cool down. Like that shit zoned me out. That's a fact. Zone me out. Zone me out. All right, man. Chaz, what's your number four episode for the season? My number four is going to be Mally Booty. Okay. Um, just, um, just uh, everything that that was going on with that, you know what I'm saying? The drama turtle um, adventure that they was on, which was funny as fuck to me, and in it in itself, like 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 you really going back, and you know what I'm saying? Twenty years or whatever y'all was running. You and this chick, and she look, she look older. I mean, I mean, I probably would have knocked her off. Her friend, not so much, but you know what I'm saying. Hey, listen, you needed a wingman. Hey, I understand. I've had to be the wingman before with with somebody I didn't really desire, but shit, you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> so I understood. Um, the conversation between uh, Ari and and fucking E during this, I always, I always love when Ari gets in E's ass. Like, like you know saying that that shit always <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he needs this shit. I don't know why the fuck. Like, I don't. E, you know, as crazy as it sounds, E was like way the habitual line stepper. <laughs> like, yeah, E, E, like a little full of himself, motherfucker. Like, I, I totally yeah. get how Ari is looking at him. Like the all the jabs that Ari give him, it's like nigga, like that's that's how E act. Yeah, like like you kind of you kind of got I I don't know I I just feel like he had this weird ass confidence that it it didn't you didn't deserve to be as confident as you you were is like if you ever found like if you ever been in contact with somebody that's truly arrogant but you really don't understand why they're arrogant that was E Facts. to me you know what I'm saying like so um. You know, and and him, you know, saying is outwardly expressing that he thinks the movie sucks, wants to sell it. You know, what I'm saying from under Billy, which I understand. Get one to get this motherfucker off there, because there was all kinds of signs pointing to that. So I do understand that. So that that for those reasons, that that was my number three. I mean, my number four. I got you, man. Uh, Spike, what you got for number four? Number four, I have the dream team. Um. Finally, we get E and uh, Billy Walsh fight. I, I just enjoyed the whole how that how that played mm-hmm. out, and E mm-hmm. finally having to back up his words. So that was just hilarious to me, and how Billy Walsh kept, kept antagonizing him like "fuck you." Uh, so that that was one of the best things about the the dream team as far as this episode for me. Um, also, the run back in with your man's Josh Weinstein and. Ari working his magic, doing his thing as far as, you know, getting my client back in position of where I wanted him to be. I thought this was a classic entourage, like, here's the template, here's what we do, watch us do it well episode. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Number four for me is Welcome to the Jungle. Um, Obviously, they switched it up a little bit. The first episode, maybe the only episode that had, like, a scene before the actual opening credits, Spike, you called it the office style setting. Um, Hate it. I put this in the list. Yeah, it's, it's not one of my favorites. So, fun fact if you look at the viewer ratings for this season, this is the highest ranked episode. Um, it almost didn't make my like. So, the day fuckers is so silly that I couldn't put, I couldn't put it above uh, Welcome to the Jungle. But also, Welcome to the Jungle is, I guess, in the world of Entourage, in my opinion, it's overrated. Um, it's a cool episode. I like it. 
but it's not something where I look at like, oh, this got this is up in contention for one of the best of the series. Um, I like seeing Billy Walsh on set. I like them actually being this. Remember, we know Vince is a movie star, but we've never been on a movie set with him. And I'm glad that they took this. We'll see a little bit more of this in season five as well and further season. Um, but we're actually on the set with them and kind of see how this thing is going. Billy is fucking nuts. He's not letting niggas see dailies. He's tackling people on trucks. You know, he's sex kills, like doing dumb <laughs> shit all throughout. Um, Vince's makeup was trash. I just want that to be known for the record. His Pablo Escobar makeup was absolutely terrible. Um, e being skeptical from the jump. Chaz, you already talked about the uh, end quote and things like that. So I had to put it in there because we didn't know. This is something it was it was almost like a reward for us also because we had been with Vince chasing Medellin since season two. When Ari was still at Terrence's agency in that old office, we saw it in season three when Ari brought out the, the, the powdered sugar and put it on the mirror. Like Medellin had his own lore. So for us to finally see all oh, this is actually shooting, I thought that Facts. was a big deal. I got it at number four. Chaz, what's your number three for season four? Uh, my number three is going to be um, it's going to be the dream team. Okay. Um, I like the way that uh, I like the way Ari uh, got Heath Ledger up out of that movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Pull that on Josh Weinstein. I, I love that. Uh, you know, thing to see his uh. His coyness, um, E and B, E and Billy getting into a fight. I love the shit, and but you know it, it just goes <laughs> to show you, um, there's certain things you can't really say to people, and <laughs> and think shit's gonna fly. And Billy Wash, if, if E is a habitual line stepper, so the fuck is Billy Wash, and you can't. Oh, I don't God, give a yes. fuck. I don't. I don't give a fuck who you is. Right? Just listen. There's only so much you can talk to me or call. It, 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 there's only so much you can, so much negative energy you can bring my way before I'm, I'm really trying to put my my motherfucking hands on you. So I understand E having an, enough of his shit. I understand that this motherfucker like like it, but it was deeper for E. I think I think it was like E was on some shit like you talking crazy to me. I put in the last of my motherfucking money, and on top of that, bitch. You put out a fucking shitty ass movie, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like I understand that motherfucker was like, nah, 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 you you doing too much. And he had been warning them, like, you keep calling me suit, this and that, I'm gonna fuck you up. And you know what I'm saying? He had been warning them, you know what I'm saying? But Billy was like, nah, and then you know what I'm saying? When you invite a motherfucker to your genitals, I mean action is gonna happen. So um, Thanks. you know what I'm saying? So for that, um, you know, that, that's my that's my uh that's my number, number three. three. Spike Lou, what you got for number three? For number three, what I have is the first cut is the deepest. Mm, okay. This was such a relief coming off such a terrible episode. Uh, <laughs> that I thought the first episode was. I'm sorry, Rich. I know it seemed but it, it was such a relief to be back in this world. And um, I really like to see. We appreciate Ari so much as a character, but I loved to see how people in the world perceive him that are not actors or managers like E and uh, Vince. I loved that they were trying to keep his kid out of school. He rolled up to the, the dude on the board's office trying to figure it out. Like I loved all, I loved him in daddy mode and still being Ari. And then once he found out what it was, he was like, "Oh well, fuck y'all, y'all don't accept me for who I am." That was a pretty dope little storyline that they had there. But um, this one. Was definitely my number three is the first cut is the deepest. No doubt. They definitely wanted, I think the, I think he started heating up in season two. Season three, they knew they had something. And then season four, they knew, like, we got to get Ari's own storylines. We got to get more of Ari's personal life, all of that. Some scenes without Vincent e, the whole nine, just like you just said, Spike. Um, number three for me is going to be Sorry Harvey. Sorry Harvey is number three. Um, Opens up strong with the so they built this lore of Harvey, and you have you have Ari in the car on the phone with E. This is right after E promised him the movie or sold him the movie without really being able to sell it. And Ari's telling him like, "Did you know that 
Harvey was a Navy SEAL, like a middle class Drew. Well, he was a Marine. A Marine, a Marine, excuse me, a middle yeah. class Drew who grew up with everything. He wanted to be a Marine. Do you know why? Because he said, <laughs> and I quote, I wanted to know, I want to know what it feels like to kill somebody. He is going to kill you when you find out what happened. Um, he really just being oblivious. It goes to that part that he's really not from this town because he doesn't he doesn't see why people are afraid of Harvey. Like, it's cool. It ain't no big deal. I told him we was gonna do it. We ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna pull out. All right. Like, oh, I love to be there for that. Um, drama obviously wanting to be annexed in the Beverly Hills. That's just such a drama storyline. Just being <laughs> extra. Like, I got this new condo, but it ain't good enough. I need to be a part of Beverly Hills. Let me reach out to the mayor of the city, which is wild. I have a superstar brother. Let me see if that can give, do me some favors. Vince has it in, but obviously the brother we love, he's going to look out for him. Um, shout out to them Ed Hardy days as well. Niggas was out here wearing Ed Hardy like Man. nothing. Um, the car crazy. switch, we had the Ari car switch. Obviously the valet, the Ari on some trash. Is there a manager? I'm I'm a, I'm a Anderson. I'm Is there a, a better speaker? An, an, Eng, an English speaking manager? Uh, English I do speak English. Hey, a first, we done all language, been there though. English, we done all language. been there. We like, bro, come on, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to the valet. Uh, they was really getting wrongly accused, and everything was good. Um, and I got to shout out the cranberry juice story because I felt Harvey a thousand percent. I, I can't even lie. I can't even I've lie been because there. you would I, do that. I hate. Do that. No, I, I've been there. I hate. Listen, I hate mayonnaise. Right? I hate mayonnaise. <laughs> Like everybody that knows me really knows. Like I hate mayonnaise. Like I don't like to be around it. I hate mayonnaise. I'm like that. If with somebody onions. told me, if somebody told me, right? If I order something and somebody brings it up, and I said I said no mayonnaise, like yes you did. You wanted mayonnaise. Like why the fuck? <laughs> After years of never even tasting cranberry juice, <laughs> when I come in here and order, now I will say this. I don't know if I'd have taken it to the point where, like, I don't want another drink. I want you to, like, Harvey was on some. I want you to tell me that I didn't do this. <laughs> and I don't know what's up with the waiter, but that nigga wasn't budget. At that point, it was principal. <laughs> like, nigga, fuck you. You did say this. Even though I know you didn't say it, I'm saying you said it. Mm. That nigga Harvey went off. But I ain't mad at Harvey because there's something about when I know I didn't say something and you sitting here in my face trying to tell me I did. Because now you playing with me. And now I was I'm trying to think to that. I was trying to think of who I believed right there. I didn't know. I, I don't know if I believed Harvey that that much. I think the way he I, the way I he said after fifty believe. years of never even taking a sip, he said I've never taken a sip of cranberry juice. Why the fuck would I come in? Up? I believe Harvey a thousand percent. I completely I see him believe saying, I can see. Look, I can see y'all know the food industry. I can see Harvey talking, half paying attention to the dude, and the dude asking him, "You want cranberry?" Him just saying, "Yeah, whatever," and him bringing him cranberry. That's what I could see. Yeah. Him actually saying cranberry, I agree with Harvey on that. He probably never said it, but I think the waiter may have asked him, and he was like, "Yeah, whatever, just get out yeah. of my face, kid." Mm, so I never thought about I would it say like this. That. Yeah, I will say this. Harvey seems like he is going to be somebody that's real particular about the way he likes things, and as somebody that's re real particular about the way I like things, when I ordered them, um. The, the worst, it, the worst. It will fucking. It, you want to see me go from zero to a hundred? <laughs> tell me that I I didn't order. So, uh, tell me that I ordered something that I didn't order a specific way, and I will flip the fuck out. Like like like. So I completely understand that shit. Like hold on, it's one thing to say you messed up, but it's another thing to say no, I didn't mess up. You messed up. No nah, motherfucking no. You don't get no pass on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I will flip off the fucking handle because I know how particular I am about certain things. Like, you know what I'm saying? Rich has been out Wait, there so, with me, so he knows too. I was just going to say, so y'all the type of the niggas, will y'all double listen. back? Will y'all double back? I'm like, not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not ever <laughs> put me in a category when it comes to this shit with Chaz. That nigga, <laughs> when you when he say he the most he, he the most particular, like, it's to the point where like, I don't even, because they go. You embarrassed when he all, order. You embarrassed when you order like he he orders up spike. He orders so particular that in my head I'm like they're gonna fuck this up. Anybody <laughs> would fuck this up. It's too particular. Like nobody's gonna remember it. If they, I'll be more surprised if they get this shit right. And he's absolutely going Harvey on them if it's messed up. Yeah. Well, let me let me take it back. Let me let me let me shoot my nigga some bills. He's going. Chaz does this thing where he, he's not doing it on purpose, but it kind of like he. He looks at shit and then kind of looks at you almost like you stupid. 
but it's not in a malicious way. It's just kind of like who he is. So if you if you know him, you know he don't mean nothing by it. But he's like, oh, this is this is a, he says it so matter of fact. Oh, 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 this is the wrong order. Yeah, this is the wrong order. I need you to send this back. Like he do shit like that. <laughs> like I don't. Like, I'm not. I'm, there's no conversation. Like it's, it's not a conversation to be had. I'm telling you, this order is wrong. I I'm already know. You we ain't right. even got to talk about it. Yeah, we ain't right. gonna talk about it. I'm telling yes. you right now. Like, oh. just get it right. And, and I've already told you what the correct order was, so I'm not gonna repeat it. Go ahead and just get that it right. Funny. He wanted them niggas. It, I'm completely different. I, I order the most. If I gotta change a lot of shit, I won't even order because I'm already under the shit. Like me and Rich think a lot of like. I'm already under the assumption if I gotta make a lot of changes, you're fucking this up. Like I, I, I know you're fucking this up. I know you don't care enough about this job to get this shit right. I know you don't. So just give me the chicken tenders and fries and it'll be over with and we done. Like if I gotta yeah. make too many modifications, it's it. Like fuck it. I Chad, don't want it. When Chaz order, and I'm the type, it. I'm the type to just leave it too. Like like once if I do or make the order and it's fucked up, like I like I'd have to be out with a chick or something for her to be like, nah, this ain't what he like. I'm not sending it back. We're not doing all this back and forth. Like I'll eat that. Cause I should have never came here. That's what I I put it on me. Like I shouldn't even fucking came here. I knew y'all was gonna fuck this hey. <laughs> Chaz, one of them niggas. Chaz, one of them niggas. Where as soon as the server gets, he, as soon as he turns that corner to the kitchen, he this motherfucker at- out here. <laughs> yeah, they cussing. They cussing that nigga out. They cussing that nigga out. Oh, oh shit, man, that's funny. That was me going over number three. So Chaz, man, what's your number two? What's your number two um, episode of the season? My number two is um, s- sorry, Harvey. Um, okay. All the reasons you, uh, all the reasons you named. Uh, plus, I I just love the fact that motherfucking. Uh, I love the fact that drama never gets anything all the way right. Like 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 yeah yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put you up with my boy my with my brother. And, you know, what I'm saying we gonna we gonna get you some nice little kitty and stuff like that. And that just and and just being drama like it can't just go all the way smooth. Yeah, you found this supposedly um this woman that w- that you was thinking was a woman, and yeah, she you know what I'm saying she's hot and she's into this this uh. This old guy that's balding and everything, they talking politics, they feeling the vibe and everything. And then you find out, yeah, nah, she really a dude. Damn. <laughs> like, the it, it's, it's, that's just the story of drama's life. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> he is he is the walking uh, epitome of, of Murphy's Law. The way that's that right. nigga delivered the news, like, well, according to some, that Barbie might be a king. He said, Excuse me, <laughs> she's got balls, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Just a casual <laughs> shit got balls. Oh, <laughs> what? Shit, uh, hey, like I said, no, that's the, the most. The funnier part is when it when the dude's like, you know, frankly, I I, I don't give a discretion. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> care. What? Like, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, we got a connection. What? Like, oh my really? god! I don't know if y'all ever watched Californication, but dude right there absolutely. in Californication is a beast. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's another uh, one. Chaz got me. Chaz got me hit to Californication. Hey Amen. Uh, Hank, Mo- Hank Moody. Who? Hank Moody events. Who get? Who get the? Who, so, who knock him down? So I'm gonna say. I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to say Vince in, in mm. quantity and quality. But I will say this about Hank Moody. There's no. It, there's literally no reason for him to be hitting as many. As he did, <laughs> like that, that he hey. ran through him. Hank like, Moody, a legend, real. man. A legend. I think it's a, a little closer. It's it's close though. Like Vince was no, a movie I'm not star. Say like it's not said. close. Okay, Hank Moody was out here. Close. Like I'm writing books, and and I'm right. Like, Hank Moody was getting it in, bro. Right, now, listen, that nigga, that nigga put up wilt numbers. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Hank Moody, yeah. wilt numbers. Yeah. legend. That, the jersey is in the Raptors, buddy. Without Absolutely. question, without question, man. All right, number two for me. We talked about it. Both of you mentioned it. Oh, wait a minute. Is it, is it oh, I'm sorry. Spike? I'm sorry. Spike, my bad. My bad. Spike, yeah, no worse. No worse. Uh, number two for me is No Cans Do. I thought this was a great episode, man, about them getting ready to go to Cans. Funniest scene in the episode is when they thought, man, you definitely couldn't do this today. My man had a yeah. turban on and drama was talking to him. <laughs> and Ari walked by. Drama was like, he's fucked. And he told us. 
And he was telling my man, yo, we're going to have dinner. We're going to do all of this, that, and the third. And my man was like, how I find you? Destiny. I thought that whole scene right there was wild. But just them getting ready to go to Cairns and setting everything up for this, I thought that was really good. So no Cairns do for me. Yeah, man. It really hurt me to leave that one off, man. I love I love that episode personally. I just it, I just can't make room for it in the best mm. episode. But I love that. It's one of my personal favorites. Speaking yeah, of personal man, favorites. Gonna... Yeah, man. Speaking of personal favorites. Number two for me is the dream team. So, personally, this is my favorite episode of the season. Right? This is my favorite episode of the season. However, I made the mistake in season two of picking my favorite episode as the best episode. Mm. You two gentlemen were correct. The best episode of season two really is Exodus. However, I picked an offer refuse because it's my personal favorite. If I had to pick an episode, just to rant, if I was watching Entourage out of order and I had to pick episodes to watch, that'd be one of the first ones I put on. I just enjoy what's going on. I just, I enjoy the roller coaster ride of it. We got Aquaman. We don't have Aquaman. Leo's over there about to do Aquaman. The whole nine. However, it's not the best episode. So I thought about that when we were doing this season. Um, as much as I love the Dream Team, I can't say it's the best. Um, a lot of things that I enjoy. First of all, drama, once again, doing some shit only drama would do. Trying to get the medical marijuana card because he wants a hat. He don't even want the weed, uh, which is crazy. <laughs> so he can look younger. Obviously, he has the bug out moment there. Shout out to Snoop. Snoop had a great appearance when he talked about the leaked trailer. I saw the trailer. That's how the Vince E even found out that the trailer leaked. So just randomly imagine that. Just randomly, we we in Barney's and we ran into Snoop. The Snoop is the one that told us. That's what the, when, when you watch like uh well Letterman's not on, on anymore, of course. But when you watch Kimmel and other talk shows and they have these interesting stories of chance, you see Eddie Murphy tell stories about certain things throughout his career. This is one of those stories, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like mm -hmm. it's you know what's crazy? We, the way we found out about the Medellin trailer leaking, we ran into Snoop. Snoop told us mm -hmm. at Barney's, and the, like that's some shit that happened. So I always appreciate that in the LA part of it. Go ahead, Spike. Did we get slight confirmation that Ari leaked this? No, it was no, because uh, he didn't have it. No, it, it was the uh, somebody getting was, back uh, the girlfriend, yeah, assistant's girlfriend, the editors. Who? One of the so yeah, one the of the ed editors of the film. His he he put after he he broke up with his girlfriend. What, what, he, oh, they he, said that they went through that. They said it, yeah. yeah. He okay, put the, you, he, he, put the, he put the porn up and, and to get back at him. She leaked the trigger, so got Billy it, ended it. up apologizing to E because he found out that happened. But let's get to the fight, right? This has been brewing. You two had touched on it, but I, you neither one of you quoted this. This is worth quotes to let you know <laughs> how is. disrespectful Billy Walsh was, right? Billy accuses E of leaking the trailer, then he calls him, he says, You rat cocksucker. Fuck you. You suck at your job. You got a Napoleonic complex, and I'm going to fuck your mother if I ever meet her. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey. All, when a motherfucker all trying to get his having... ass whooped. That's what you say. That's the, blue, that's the get... blueprint to it right there. <laughs> saying that is enough. Saying that is enough. Not only are you saying that you got your finger in my face the whole time. Why are you saying it? In front of a lot of people. Yeah, and a room full of people. Yeah, I don't get me fucked And up. then, then he tells him, get that finger out of my face. This nigga Billy doubles down. Why don't you admit that you're a traitor, traitorous <laughs> pussy and that you like to suck cock? <laughs> this nigga was out here wilding <laughs> in the middle of Barney's. Oh, man. <laughs> Billy Walsh still, I, crazy, might, dude, I might still be whooping Billy Walsh ass. I yeah, might still be walking Billy yeah, Walsh ass today it, in 2020. It literally be on site every time. Like every yeah. time. Yeah, every I, time. I tell you this, it would have took more than Vince to get me up off of him. Absolutely. Like it wouldn't have been yeah. Vince breaking up this fight. Vince I would have been. Yeah, Billy nah. Walsh unless, ain't no unless Vince has some Elvis. Aquaman strength. Man, <laughs> like, listen, nigga. He would have needed it. Billy Walsh, Billy Walsh gonna be in the hospital. Like the next scene when he in the hospital and I've got the torn shirt and shit. And here's here's the worst, here, here's the worst part about niggas like Billy, right? I beat your ass in Barney's. And you still and talking shit. You still talking shit. We in this interview, you talking about Tiny E. That's what we call him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you come up with the suit shirt, suit suck <laughs> shirt. Like, bro, why are you playing? Like, he did. I need that shirt too. I, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even. Habitual line stepper. Habitual <laughs> okay. line stepper. And, and again, like, 
like we said, this was a little too much this season because, like, I, I feel like it was just enough in all the rest of the season. But this one was like, okay, I want to whoop his ass too. At first, I was like, okay, it's cool. He quirky, you know, a little he, he artistic or whatever it may be in his artistic bag. So you got to give him his leeway. But like we just said, bro, all this shit you doing now, habitual line stuff. You get you you getting yeah. your ass whooped, bro. Yeah, you got to. Up. And you got to. This, I, this is on Seth level of uh, disrespect. Yeah, oh, yeah, hundred percent. It's past that. Past that, but Seth. I don't know because Seth was that was real disrespectful, though. Because I almost Asking appreciate, me. I almost appreciate Billy's disrespect because I know what it is. Like, let's get to it. Seth was that little mm-hmm. Kurt, like, you trying to be funny? Like, now I'm not only mad because of what you're doing, I'm mad that you think I'm the one to play with like that. Like, you trying to really take it there. But either way, the last thing I'll say about the dream team is I do love the ups and downs, topsy turvy they did with Medellin. We talked about it a little bit. Is Medellin good? Is it not good? We don't know. Like, as viewers, we don't know. Like, we really don't know it. So the trailer leaking and the trailer being good, um, that's why I always refer to a good trailer. I talked about it with Trap. I, from ever since, ever since I saw this shit, I always say, if it's a good trailer, I say, oh, you got hit with the Medellin trailer. Like, that's mm-hmm. what they did. Um, so Ari comparing it to Ray, like, it reminded me, it reminded him when uh, he saw the Ray trailer and knew Jamie Foxx was going to get an Oscar nod, the whole nine. Everything was perfect about it. And then the episode ending, Ari working his magic. I got the dream team package because Heath Ledger, the sabotage. We're going to do the movie. Billy directing, you producing, Vince Storing. Like, let's get it going. After we know they got beef, I just thought it was a brilliant end to the episode. Very enjoyable from top to finish. Uh, that is my number two. Like I said, my favorite episode of the season. However, it is not the best. So let's get into our number ones. El Boogie Tal, Chaz. What is your That's number fair. one episode for season four? You know, it's crazy that we both are in agreement that that is our favorite episode of the season. Yeah. However, the best episode of the season to me is Gary's desk. Mm. Yeah. That's that. What's that expecting to me? That? Um, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, just this. Um, I was going to do the, the, I, I don't like doing like the splits because I w- it was between that and um the finale but I- I'm actually gonna choose Gary's desk um okay. and to me the only reason why I- well I can't say it's the only reason why but the one of the main reason why is because when you stuck in a dilemma I asked myself what would I do if I was Ari because you have somebody that 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 clearly is out earning but you got somebody here that 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 you know what I'm saying that, that fucked uh, your co-worker's wife. What do you do? Do you fire them both? Yes. Hey, I would have so, fired them I, both. Hey, Listen, I'm so you can't be up. fighting I, I, in the <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be fighting in my fucking in my fucking uh establishment in the conference room. Nah, bro. Nah, nah. Both of you gotta go. I, I understand. I understand him being mad though. I understand about that shit. Like I even thought about even keeping the one that didn't make the less money, that made the less money. But if I'm in that office, I'm like, bro. As soon as I seen that he he out earned him, I'm like, listen, I I, can't I see why he fucking here. your wife. Yeah, I see why he. <laughs> fuck, that, that, that's how fucked up I am. Hey, that's how fucked up oh, I shit. am, though. I'm looking at him like, I see why the nigga fucking your wife, bro. <laughs> like, the nigga look just like you, and he make more money than you. Yeah, hey. bro, you out of here. Like, hey, what are we but, talking hey. about? I already asked a good question because I would have asked the same did she know? question. Did you? Yeah. Did you, yeah. Did, did, did you fuck as you or did you fuck as you? Yeah, that's, that was a real good question. I mean, when did you delivery. ask that question? I, yeah. No, listen. That was perfect because the delivery was perfect. That there was genuine because, like, I'm really curious. Like, I'm not trying to be. We funny. was thinking that too. Like, I really want to know. Like, yeah, yeah like, that's weird. Like, because if I'm cheating on my wife, I'm getting a complete opposite. I ain't getting the same mm-hmm. thing. No facts. Uh, not at all. Hey, if I'm, I agree. If with I'm you. cheat on my wife. She's not gonna be. I'm not gonna cheat on another with another light skinned woman. No, she's probably gonna be chocolate. I understand. So I, you know, what I'm saying that's why I, I would. My mind, I'm thinking the exact same thing. Like, why would you cheat with the exact replica? And the motherfuckers look exactly alike too. So they're identical. Like, yeah, identical. They're not even. They're hey, not I'm, close to being fraternal. 
Right. Again, I'm so fucked up. I'm looking at it like if you look at straight business, like this nigga make more money than you and he took your wife from you. I know he going to get clients. Like, bro, you ain't like you, you, you don't measure up, bro. You ain't gold, uh, whatever it is, standard. So, like, the gold standard. Yeah, you out of here, homie. I would have been hot at him for telling Mary. I would have been hot at him for telling Mary J too. Straight up. No, no, I definitely, I definitely would have been hot at that. I definitely Mm -hmm. and Mary J knowing that that wasn't him. Damn, how did you, how did you guess that? Like, like the fact. Hey, I love how Ari's sitting there punching the elevator. Like, that nigga was punching the hell out of the elevator. Like, come on, man, let me get out of here. Let's hurry the fuck up before this motherfucker come around. And then yes. end up seeing them. Mm-hmm. So mm. yeah, that's that's Absolutely, my number man. one pick. I'm not mad. Hopefully, at it. I'm they, not y'all mad enjoyed at it. the episode too. Nah, yeah. and I do. It was a good cameo. Like, but once again, ease deaths, the whole nine, everything that went involved with that. Uh, I'm not mad at it. I was not expecting it to be a number one. I will say that. Um, however, it is a good episode. Um, Spike Lou, what's what's taking the crown for you in season four? The crown for me is season four is the finale. The cons, kids. Oh, uh, real quick, man. Real, real quick, the Spike. Kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Um, just since this is number one, we'll both just go ahead and combine them. That's my number one as well. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, so let's go ahead and just have the conversation now. Go ahead, Spike. Let's do it. Uh, for me, one of the few times the boys are left in limbo with a loss, like we see the end of it to jump all the way to the end. Like, okay, what's gonna happen here? As far as nobody fucking with the movie. And I was surprised to see that E was right. This whole time, I'm thinking E being a bitch throughout the season. I ain't fucking with E. He's one of my least favorite characters of this season because I felt like he was hating and overstepping, like you said, Chaz. But to see that he was right at the end of it and the movie did, it did actually suck. I'm like, okay, damn. Now, where do we go from this? This makes me more excited about the next season. Versus the next big movie is lined up, whatever it may be. They've had good cliffhangers, but I don't think they've ever had a cliffhanger in this nature. So that was one of the reasons. Second reason, I love drama storyline. It was hilarious. The whole thing from getting the room to fucking the bitch on the beach for two hours and having a crowd watching. At all, all of that was hilarious. Um, and the deal, like how, how the deal and my guy, the, I guess he's Iranian, the Iranian guy. How he heard about the deal, offers 50 million, Dana Gordon offers however much. Like just seeing those guys work out in the field at the festival, back against the wall. It, it was a really good entourage episode, man. So <clears throat> for me, the Kane's kids, Kane's kids. Absolutely, man. Uh, do you do, do either one of you remember the first time watching this and really for those who haven't, if, if you're like us and you've seen entourage multiple times, it's it's hard to remember. But there was a genuine feeling of, yo, is this movie good or not? Like, how's this reaction gonna be? I never forget that watching the first time. Like, how is this going to be? And to Spike's point, they even left a glimmer of hope. Because remember, at the end of this episode, we knew the movie sucked. We Vince liked it. We we knew the movie sucked. But remember, when they pulled up on Johnny at the beach, and Johnny's like, How'd it go? He said, Man, it was great. Like, because it's almost like, damn, are they gonna like just try to sweep it like it was cool and Vince still going to be Vince. And then obviously mm-hmm. season five, we see a completely different version of their life and what happens when they, uh, as Ari says, when you have the Jiggly effect, when you, when you go into Hollywood, uh, Hollywood prison, you know, for making a bad movie. So all of that was great. Just the suspense of it. Spike, I'm with you seeing Ari work his magic. And this is how a movie gets sold. This is how it gets done. Like it hasn't premiered. You got somebody who wants to buy it without even seeing it. They got the negotiations going. Um, only drama could fuck that up. Like, bro, you got the girl, you got the bed, like let it go. But he had Jesus. to go down there. He had to go down there and let them know that like, y'all playing in my face. Like drama. It's so let that dr- shit go. She even drama, told him, bro. It's so drama. It's we so on bed. point for his character. She's like, scared. We, we only need a bed. All we need is a he bed. Was just, God, it was- he didn't, it was it's the principal, man. Johnny was like, nah. And that and the hotel manager was playing in his face. Absolutely. In his face, man. Like, you want the honeymoon Absolutely. suite? Who, who, why, why can't I have it? Uh, I don't know, maybe honeymooners in it. Then he was like, uh, if I if I was George Clooney, this wouldn't be happening. Oh, Masor Clooney, a real movie star. Like, hey, right, bro, stop playing. Hey. With me. <laughs> um, hey, listen, that that's the kind of energy that got that that got that dude snatched up at uh, at the airport by phase on love. Oh, mm. you ever see that? Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, kind of absolutely. 100%. <laughs> yeah. 
a random thought I had while watching this episode. I was trying to think to myself, oh, like, how shit. cold, how cold does a woman have to be for me to bust out the macarena with? Like, I'm trying to think, like, damn, how bad you got to be for me to get up and do the fucking macarena on this yacht, like drama was doing with uh, Jacqueline. Um, mm. That's a, that was a genuine question that ran through my head, and also, I don't once, even think, I don't even one, think it, it had to be like Coco Jones or something. Yeah, shout out to Coco, love man. Love, yeah, love, love her. her. Love her. Jeez. Um, I have one question to close things out, but before I do, one of my favorite moments of this episode, we get to see Nikki Rubenstein, and he's on the phone with Ari because obviously he's the one to put the money up, bro. I want my bread back. And Ari's like, man, we can do better. We can win an Oscar. That nigga, Nikki said, um, Ari, I would have hired a sales rep if I thought you were going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> Nikki, listen to me. And that nigga, that nigga, Nick had enough of it. Shut the fuck up, Ari. Like, just, I don't know if anybody's <laughs> been that mad. I know the three of us probably had where it's like literally like, bro, I'm not going to repeat stop myself anymore. Yeah. Like, stop fucking talking to me. Shut the fuck up, Ari. Like, yeah, I'm running this shit. This is mine. Like, you taking that meeting, you taking that deal. Um, That was one of my favorite moments. But the main question that I want to ask you about this episode before we get out of here, would you have sold the movie? Before the screening, whether it to be the Yair or anybody else, would you have sold the movie before it actually screens? Or are you rolling the dice and you go ahead and letting it screen and it possibly being a flop? I'm selling it to Harvey. It wouldn't even have got that far. You selling it to Harvey for the twenty? For yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I ain't gonna hold you. I might have gave it to my man's for fifty. I might have just been like, I'm my, my hands, I'm done with it. We doubled our money. Like the next movie, we, like we can go ahead and get art to start working on that now, based off the so, trailer. Like what what I feel like the the best option for me there is we sell it for that fifty. Now, all right, the magic that you're gonna work is start getting on the phone based off the trailer. Go ahead and get my next shit lined up, contract signed based off the trailer before this shit even and. And if I got any influence, I'm getting that delayed. I'm trying to get my man's that bought it for 50. I'm trying to get it delayed as far as I can, as far as when he dropped it. And that way I know I got two or three movies lined up and I got the 50 and double my money. That's the plate I would have I ain't mad at that either. I ain't mad at it. But, I, but, but being, being that E was so fucked up about saying like, yo, I really think this is that bad. <laughs> If he is coming at me and he is telling me like, "Yo, this this movie has some good parts, man, but this this shit is not good. This is not gonna be the." If he give me the rundown, like, "Yo, this is not gonna be good for your career. This is not gonna be good if this shit tank. I don't want that on my conscience." Hey, I brought this shit to you, bro. I'm telling you everything that on everything I love. Hey, need to sell this movie. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be like, all right, let's sell this shit. Now, if if it would have got to that point where I don't think I would have, like I said, I, I think I would have sold. I wouldn't have told Harvey no, and because you know what, you know what, building a relationship like in Hollywood, everything is about building relationships, and for whatever reason, I don't understand why they just continually wanted to fuck up Harvey, the relationship they put, could possibly have with Harvey. So I would have, I would have just for even for the, the first fuck up, I would have just made amends and said, you know what, let's sell this shit to this motherfucker for real. And and you know what I'm saying that would have that would have helped out a lot. But you see, my 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 short answer is, if I'm E, I'm selling it. If I'm Vince, I'm holding because Vince really thought it was good. He knew more information. As viewers, we didn't know if it was going to be good or not, but I'm glad that it wasn't because it set up a wonderful season five, which we will discuss next week. I'm calling it right now. I'm going to be shocked if we don't have trips next week for number one episode. I'm calling it right now. I think we're all. I think. I think we're going to have trips. I think. Um, I think so. One of my favorite seasons. I can't wait to talk about it. What happens when a movie star goes down? So. Spike Lou, Chaz, I appreciate y'all for another episode, the best episode ever. Everybody out there watching, listening, we definitely appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming through. Go ahead, Spike. No, I wasn't going to say nothing. I'm... Oh, my bad, my bad. Um, but yeah, that's it. That wraps this up. Season four of Entourage. We are in the books. We know what our 
finale episodes are going to be. We're going to be taking the cons, kids, from me and Spike, and then Gary's desk from Chaz. We will see y'all next week for a brand new episode reviewing season five. Until then, y'all be cool. Y'all be cool. Peace out. Peace. Peace.